Good day, great folks. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to 1.7 under Dynamics of Imperfect Markets. Well, this one says study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. We saw something almost similar to this, and this is a king demand curve, and so obviously this is an oligopoly. Now, as we study this, what is it that we see? Well, the first thing we see is that we have two demand curves. Uh, one is labeled D1, the other one is labeled D2. And together, it's one demand curve, which is called a kinked demand curve. Now, <clears throat> D1 is more elastic than D2. And so if price changes higher, the quantity demanded is affected more than if price was dropped. Uh, quantity demanded would change just slightly because it's inelastic at D2. Right, uh, so the best price would be 90 rand, uh, which corresponds with 150 units produced. So if this or particular oligopolist wants to make more money, then they should not use price. So they should resort to non-price competition. They should advertise their product. They should do uh you know other things like uh branding door-to-door -door deliveries extend their shopping hours do business of online and uh, make use of social media use influencers way too many things that the business can do hey uh even uh what do you call this discounts loyalty points loyalty cards rewards you name it Let's have a look at the questions. Which imperfect market is illustrated by the graph above? This one is an oligopoly. We know that because it's the only market structure with a kinked demand curve. Then name the downward sloping demand curve above. Well, this one is called a kinked demand curve. Then explain how price leadership works in this type of market. Well, this market structure has few firms in it. Uh, an example can be banks. An example can be network service providers. I'll use network service providers, for example. Now, if then, let's say MTN is the dominant firm in this particular market structure, well, MTN could announce that they are increasing their tariffs. And uh, if other network service providers do the same, well, we say MTN has done price leadership. So others are just confirming that, yes, we agree to things are difficult. Blah, blah, blah. We agree to this. They also follow suit. So the leader, the dominant firm would usually announce an increase in prices and others follow suit. Basically, that's what it is. Then, um, so that's how it works. Four marks, okay, two points there. Then assume that the current selling price is 90. Of course, it would be 90. What other price is there? Explain why this business will not lower their price or even increase their price to improve sales. Basically, because at a lower price, the demand curve will not be as responsive as it is at a higher price. Okay. So what you would say is you would want to show us with numbers. So you want to say 90 times 150, whatever the answer is. I'm not going to calculate that. And then you say 90 times 190. Okay, so basically lower to what? Say to 50 because it's the only price given here. So if they would lower their price to try and increase their sales, yes, they would sell more. Like they won't sell 150, they'll now sell 190. But the problem is they are selling at a lower price. And so they would expect to make more money, but they wouldn't. They would if this demand curve was... Look, it's just that I cannot draw. If I was to draw a demand curve there, or even continue with this one, look, look, look how far it goes. Something is blocking me. If I put a line here, yes. What number would this be? Uh, This looks like maybe, I don't know, maybe 300, 350. Yeah, if you say 350 times 50, maybe you can exceed what 90 times 150 gives. I'm sure it does. It does exceed. Now, it won't because this demand curve is not as elastic as this one above. Because the one above, wow, it would get up to here. This looks like 400. 
400 times 50. That's please try that one. 400 times 50, it would give you a lot of money. So it this business would lower their price and make more money if their demand curve at a lower price was as elastic as the demand curve at a higher price. Unfortunately, this demand curve is inelastic. The response is tiny. Look, this huge drop in price causes a small increase in quantity demanded. So they wouldn't do this. Basically, that's what we are saying. Okay, but you need to show it uh, using calculations. So what I'm just going to do is go to the answers and show you. Okay, so we go to 1.7. Which imperfect market is this? We say it is oligopoly. This demand curve is kinked. And then uh, explain price leadership well. I explained using MTN. I said the dominant firm will initiate a change in price, e.g. they will realize economic profit. And then other competitors will also increase their prices. Basically, that's that. Then assume that the current price is 90 explain why the firm will not lower its price the only value we saw was 50 so basically like i showed you let me see if the firm lowers the price to 50 rand the total income would be 9500 which is 50 times 190 compared to the original of 13500 so this firm will suffer a loss that's nah we don't say loss this they're crazy Loss is revenue minus cost. We don't have any cost curves. They they would they would their revenue would go down by four thousand. Not to say they'll suffer a loss. They could still be making a profit. Why is he saying this? Come on. They should not stop using wrong terminology in final exams. This doesn't why pick the word loss if you can just use the word revenue it makes sense because this whole thing here let me show you this whole thing here is a demand curve right this demand curve is equal to ar you don't talk loss profit if there is no cost curves so they shouldn't use that kind of terminology if there is a word that can be used a word like revenue why are you saying loss if you can say revenue it makes me sick well this has brought us to the end of this particular video and thank you as usual god bless